is time for the wild card. The wild card series is full of wild storylines. After a 10-year absence, the Philly faithful can breathe a sigh of relief. But how far can the bats of Bryce and company carry a team that struggled down the stretch? The Cardinals band is back together for one last playoff run. With MVP candidates Arenado and Goldschmidt as the front men, can a rejuvenated Albert alongside Yachty and Wainwright top the charts before signing off for good? Cardinals are taking the field. Let's take a look now at the Phillies starting lineup. They're 87 and 75 on the season. And obviously there are some key people that the Cardinals have to worry about. The top of the order with Short, Schwarber. You've got Real Muto, Bryce Harper as well. Everybody else will pick up the slack. But Schwarber is the guy with 46 home runs. And he has jump-started this offense and has been so reliable for them. And with more on Schwarber, let's go to Alvin Gonzalez. And he has more on Schwarber. Alvin? His leadership abilities, what his presence could mean in that clubhouse. And he told me that when he got here, he was surprised by how much was made about the Phillies' 10-year postseason drought. His message to his teammates, and this is something he gleaned from his time in Chicago, was to embrace that. Let that motivate you. I talked to him during Thursday's workout, and he told me he was so proud of the group by how much they came together in the midst of so much adversity to get there. Now that they're here, his message is simple. The drought is over. There is no more pressure. Now we can go out and have fun. Michael? Yeah, winning is a lot more fun, Aldo. We will talk to you throughout the game. And that Philly lineup is going to face Jose Quintana. What can you tell me about him, Alex? Well, he's 33 years old. He's from Colombia. He's been really, really good. Has not given up more than two runs in his last 11 outings. But the biggest difference, he's a three-pitch pitcher, fastball, slurve, and changeup. And the changeup is the pitch to focus on. He's thrown it about 50% more often this year. And the command on the fastball, both in and up and tight to the right-handed hitters. Admit it, you want to play today. Oh, I wish I could play. It's just so beautiful here in St. Louis. The sun is shining, bathing the field. The grass looks beautiful, and we are ready for best of three, the new wild card round in Major League Baseball. All three games, if needed, will be here in St. Louis. Schwarber's ready. Quintana is ready. And let's do it here at Bush Stadium. First pitch. Here's a strike, and we're underway. <laughs> Phillies 87 and 75, and the Cardinals 93 and 69. And the lefty rocks and deals outside. Schwarber's an interesting player, Alex. 200 strikeouts, but boy, does he jumpstart the offense with the power. He does, and what he does in that clubhouse is leadership. Fouled away. He works very closely with hitting coach Kevin Long. They started bringing the breaking ball machine on the road. He rallies all the young guys, and they mimic that breaking ball to exactly what the pitcher has that particular day. Boy, when you sign a free agent, you want him to have the impact that Schwarber's had, so the Phillies have to be absolutely thrilled with what he's done, and he's like a player manager in that clubhouse. Sky-high pop-up, the veteran Molina. will put it away. One down. And that'll bring up Reese Hoskins. This team does hit homers, 46 for Schwarber, 30 for Hoskins. Now the top of the order, you do have some strikeouts, the 200 by Schwarber and the 169 by Hoskins. That's 10th in Major League Baseball. The 200 is the tops, and there's a the strike. This is the first playoff appearance for the Phillies since 2011. Quite a long drought. 
And the last time they were in the playoffs, they faced these Cardinals. And it was a classic game five in that one. This is the guy that was signed with the Phillies, and his job was to bring the Phillies back to the postseason. And Harper has certainly done that. Grounded foul. Yeah, Michael, for the Phillies, if you're a Phillies fan watching, more than 4,000 days between last pitch and the first pitch there against Schwarber. And they're hungry and they're ready. Yeah, the last pitch was uh, game five, and it was Chris Carpenter and Roy Halladay in a classic pitching matchup. Last time the Phillies have been in the postseason. Now, entering this season, these are the longest playoff droughts in Major League Baseball. And they were both broken. Your Mariners, 20 years, they're in as a wild card in the American League. And the Phillies, 10 years, they are in as a wild card here in the National League. So the count two and two on Hoskins. <laughs> And the pitch. It's inside. I'll tell you what, the field mics are working great. You know, every grunt, groan, <laughs> strike call. See the other game going on right now, bottom of the eighth inning. Guardians lead the Rays two to one. That one's on ESPN. has worked the count full. And the payoff. Fly ball. Left center. Who's going to get it? Carlson will get it. Two away. Alex, talk to me about nerves in postseason games. Well, especially early on, we were talking earlier, the Cardinals need 13 wins to become champions. The toughest two are these two. And you want to get off the gates. You want to come out with your dancing shoes. You want to get a hit on the board, maybe a home run, and get the momentum going. Got to bring up JT Real Muto. Another good season for him. That one's grounded to third. Marsha has sleep apnea. Take a look at their starting lineup. As we mentioned, they're 93 and 69, the National League Central Division champions. And the two, three, and four in their order, well, you could say that's some heavy lifting for pitcher Pujols, Goldschmidt, and Arenado. Cleaning up, you see the rest of the lineup as well. Let's go down to Alden again, and uh, what we just saw an unbelievable play by Arenado Alden. Yeah, Michael, I was talking to Arenado yesterday, and he called this probably the proudest season of his career, not just defensively, but how he was able to bounce back offensively. He spent the entire offseason looking to understand his swing, also looking to open up his hips and get some more mobility, and he's just had a resurgent season at the plate. And late in the season, he's feeling as good with his lower half and his stability as he has in a long time. All right, let's get to um, Newt Bar at the plate against Zach Wheeler of the Phillies. And the righty deals. And there's the strike. What do you know about Wheeler, Alex? Well, he's a stud. He came out of New York. He was with all big, the big boys over there. And he's healthy. 64, 195. There's a wicked slider there. He's got a fastball. He's got a sinker, slider, and a curve. He's in a pound of the strike zone with fastballs all over the place. Four seamers and two seamers into righties. First postseason appearance for Wheeler because when he was with the Mets, he was injured when they went to the World Series. And the other year that he was injured, they also went to the playoffs. So this is his first time significant games here in October. Certainly a love affair with this city and this player. The entire crowd. 
standing for Albert Pujols. Talk about a renaissance. By the All-Star game, you wondered, did he have anything left? Now you're wondering why he's retiring. 42 years old. Leads off first, held by Hoskins. Ball down. Two and up. Alex, what happened with this guy? Well, the first thing that happens is confidence. You know, so much in baseball is a feel good. There's a euphoric feeling around Pujols putting that uniform back on. I, wa I was with him yesterday. He feels liberated, he feels happy. And I'll tell you, at the plate, he is balanced and confident. Now it's drilled to center field and deep. Where Beerling has room, and he puts it away in front of the warning track for the first out. <laughs> so Pujols hit the ball well. Beerling ran it down, and that'll bring up Paul Goldschmidt. Goldschmidt, many consider him the National League MVP, although he is going to have competition with Manny Machado and his teammate Nolan Arenado as well. And there's a strike. It's going to be a close MVP race, and each city in the National League will have two riders that vote for that award. Well, the two writers in St. Louis split their vote. One to Arenado, one to Goldschmidt. That could hurt you in the long run. That happened to you in, uh, in Seattle, didn't it, Alex, in 96? 96, uh, the Seattle writers split their vote, and Juan Gonzalez snuck in and won it by three points, one of the closest MVP races in, in modern history. One. Right back here. Now it's one and two, and here's one, two. Guys that finished in the top two in the MVP voting, same team since 1969. The divisional era began then. The last time it happened was Jeff Kent and Barry Bonds in 2000. So it hasn't happened very often, but it could happen this year with the two stars for the Cardinals. First and slugging in OPS, Arenado third and fourth. Extra base hits, Arenado fifth, Goldschmidt fourth, and the RBI second and fourth, and Arenado's tied for fourth. So very, very close, and then you also have to factor in the defense that Arenado gives you. <laughs> Strike three, Goldschmidt down looking. Nice pitch by Wheeler. early on fastball command upper quadrant strike one's imperative and putting up away with a 98 mile an hour fastball up to the zone home plate umpire is dj rayburn and uh, he is considered a hitty hitting friendly umpire here's arenado run on first now two outs in the bottom of the first inning Game one, Phillies cards, best of three wild card series. Something to note, Arenado, every single one of his 30 home runs was left center field or left field. Not one to center or the other way. The right fielder playing very shy in right field. 
also, when you look at his power numbers and the fact that he has 73 extra base hits, he has just 72 strikeouts. So he's not your typical 2022 20, power hitter who doesn't care about the strikeouts. He's putting the ball in play. strike hitter and play some small ball this team has both Luke Moore leads off first now he's fouled back to the screen good cut and a good fastball Baseman Segura shades up the middle, pitch outside. Philly's not a great defensive team. Beerman does a good job in center. But Brandon Marsh will come in in a close game. Segura has sure hands. If it gets to him, he's going to make the play. Muto's money. He can throw out base runners. A lot of his staff is slow to the plate. He makes up for it with a quick pop time. He's got a good arm. He is the leader of the staff. They love pitching to him. And he's one of the leaders of the team as well. So the runner will go 3 2 2 outs. is there and that will do it. Bryce Harper's going to lead off when we come back in the second inning and we'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Celebrity Jeffrey. Braves Guardians is at noon Eastern on ESPN2. Mariners Blue Jays at 4 Eastern on ESPN. Padres Mets at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. And Phillies Cards at 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central on ESPN2. Guardians won their first game by a 2-1 to one score. Guardians the youngest team in the league, in the majors. And just a surprise job by Terry Francona and that organization. They won the American League Central, so they jump out to a one game to nothing lead in the best of three. Harper grabs one into shallow center field, and the catch is made by Carlson. Got a good jump and ran it down. jump here while fading away from day game right out there nice play you know Carlson's ability to play center field so well allowed the Cardinals to trade Harrison Bader to the Yankees for Jordan Montgomery who was working out of the bullpen for this series and Montgomery's meant a lot to this team and uh, the Yankees expect Bader to mean a lot to them in the postseason yeah, it was a little bit of an odd trade and the Cardinals a little thin in the outfield trade Bader the Yankees a little thin with their staff and they trade Montgomery but so far so good for both teams. Ah. One and one on Castellanos. Castellanos another one of the big free agent signings by the Phillies. He's had a little bit of a disappointing year injury. Uh, ruined it as well. But they expect big things from him in this in this series right here. It seems 
Costa, we talked to Rob Thompson. They expect good things out of Castellanos. They do. They see something there. Him and the coaching staff. And it was not necessarily a particular thing with the swing or the way he's been swinging. Uh -oh. He said he did hit a couple balls hard last week, but there's a good feeling about him, and that's why they have him back, backing up Harper. Want to provide some protection in the lineup for Harper? Bob lost one to right here. Newt Moore toward the line. And he's there. And that will do it. A six-pitch inning for Quintana. As the Phillies go down in order, and we'll go to the bottom of the second. And there's a strike. Michael, you mentioned the Guardians being one of the youngest team in a long time. The youngest team since the Guardians this year was the 1986 New York Mets. It's outside. And it's amazing what they've done, too. Francona is obviously a Hall of Fame manager, but they're doing that, I believe, with the fourth lowest payroll in the game. Incredible. And Ramirez, the catalyst of that team, signed a wonderful contract, very friendly for the Guardians into the center field. Yearling is right there. One down. That's going to bring up Dylan Carlson. Let's go down to... Uh, Alden, who uh, has more on Dylan Carlson. Yeah, Michael, it's hard to overstate just the importance of Dylan Carlson having good at-bats against right-handers in this series. There's a guy who struggled from the left side of the plate for really most of the year, but lately the Cardinals have been giving him more opportunities as a left-handed hitter. They feel like the at-bats are better. If he's productive against righties, it allows them to put his glove in center field in a spacious park, and it clears up a lot of their outfield mix. That's popped up. Foul territory. And it's going to fall untouched. It's too far away for Bone to get there. Nothing, nothing. Phillies and the Cardinals here in the bottom of the second inning at Bush Stadium. What we should do is have a little field trip in the afternoon, maybe go up in the arch. I love it. Take some pictures, you know. What a beautiful scene here. One, two. Popped up. And the third baseman comes all the way, calls off Rio Muto. It's an easier play for him, and he makes it for the second out. This is just a postcard. I mean, if you want to sell baseball to somebody who's never seen baseball, show them this whole scene with the, the arch and the stadium and the shadow of the arch. And, I mean, this, this city loves this team. 11 world championships for the Cardinals. And, of course, they love Albert Pujols as well. I, I was here yesterday. There's nobody in the stands. It's baseball heaven. And if you think about it, back in the day, this was the, the franchise that was furthest west of the Mississippi. So it was the Yankees in the east, San Louis in the west, and that explains a lot of why they have such a rich fan base all over the world. And they used to be, they, they were broadcast on KMLX, which is a powerhouse signal, so you could pick that up everywhere. And, mm -hmm. you know, within the sound of you know, Jack Buck's voice, all of a sudden you could become a Cardinal fan. There's Jack, a legend. Pretty cool. One of the greatest. You know, I, I've heard his son is pretty good, too. Yeah. What's his name, Joe? I think it's Joe, yeah. <laughs> One and two. You know, Wheeler this year has dominated 
the Cardinals. 15 and two thirds, not one extra base hit. And so far, so good. Good tempo, good fastball. And he's a reverse split guy. And what that means, Michael, he's actually better against lefties than righties because of that power fastball and that wipeout slider. Yeah, he's yet to allow a run to the Cardinals this year in two starts. And after two innings, he's still yet to allow a run. As he retires, St. Louis in order, one, two, three. Zeros on the board. We're going to go to the third inning here in St. Louis. Nothing, nothing. And Rob, it's no secret that Zach Wheeler is going to have to be big for you guys in the postseason. What are you seeing so far? Uh, it looks like stuff's explosive. The, you know, fastball's upper 90s. Uh, slider looks good. You know, he's got to get the ball, just power the ball through the zone. Jose Quintana's really good at keeping hitters off balance. What do you think about the approach against him from your hitters? Yeah, we, you know, we got to use the other side of the diamond, let the ball get deep. He's going to try and keep you off balance. And he's, he's been pitching very well lately. Rob, thanks so much. Back to you guys. Thank you, guys. And Segura will lead off. If you've ever met Rob Thompson, it's hard to come away not liking Rob Thompson. And the, the town of Philadelphia has fallen in love with him. He's gotten the Phillies back into the postseason. And he's very chill and cool about things, Alex. And you know him very well. He's just a, he's a baseball lifer who probably gave up any hope that he'd ever get the big job. But at 59, he's got the big job. One of the great, great moves that the organization, keeping a guy like Rob Thompson, I'll tell you, Philadelphia fans have fallen in love with him. George Steinbrenner used to be in love with him. Very much a father figure to Rob Thompson. 28 years with the New York Yankees. When I first arrived there in 2004, I went to see George Steinbrenner in Tampa right before spring training. And he said, there's a Canadian across the street. His name is Rob Thompson. He'll take care of you. He's my guy. And, and that meant the world to me. And it also meant a lot to Rob Thompson and that relationship with the boss. And his nickname is Topper. If you wonder why, he was the guy who used to put together a very intricate spring training workout for the Yankee spring training all the years under Joe Torre. And Joe Torre said that Rob was on top of everything. And thus comes the nickname Topper. He would show up at spring training every day at 4.30 in the morning. Nobody could beat him there. There's a ground ball to second. Donovan makes the play to get Segura. One away. S 65 and 46 since he took over. Uh, an unbelievable job. He changed the energy of that clubhouse. And when you talk to the players, they like him, they revere him. He stays out of the way. He doesn't micromanage. He lets his great coaching staff do his work. And so far, so good for that man right there. Since June 3rd, the fourth best record in the National League, Dodgers, Braves, and Mets, one, two, three. His start is high. And I asked him yesterday, Michael, I said, how is it adjusting to such a great baseball town? The fans expect a lot. The media expect a lot. He goes, hey, I worked for the boss for 20 plus years. George Steinbrenner. So that, that was the right answer. Five championships. He was a big influence to Derek Jeter, Mariano Rivera, Pettit, myself. And he's bringing all that energy. I know it was a tough move to go from pinstripes to red pinstripes, but he's a perfect fit for this town and this team. 2-0 on Bryson Stott. And Quintana deals. And there's a strike. Yeah, Thompson thought he was going to be in pinstripes, the Yankee pinstripes, his entire career. But then Gabe Kapler, when he was the manager of the Phillies, came after him hard, wanted him to be his bench coach. And here he is. 3-1 on Stott as the Phillies are looking for their first base runner against the Cardinals left-hander Quintana. And the pitch. First base runner for the Phillies as Stott works a walk. Hey, get your game on at MLBShop.com. Authentic on-field caps, tees, hoodies, and more. Get all your postseason gear and wear what the champs wear at the official source, MLBShop.com. So here's Veerling, the number nine batter in the order. Nothing, nothing, top of the third inning. 
each inning, each pitch, each out means so much in such a short series. You make a couple of mistakes, your season's over. You have to be on point on every single pitch. Alex mentioned that all the wild card teams and the division winner that plays in the wild card round, they've got to win 13 to win a championship. And these first two, well, it's never been done before. This is the first time we have a best of three wild card round. So there's a lot of pressure in this. Two and out. Michael, there's room for error in a seven game series. But in a three game series, you know, one pitch, one swing, one mistake. And usually there's a point in the game, a pivotal moment that you either bobble a ball, you throw a ball away, you make a mental mistake, and that's something to watch early on. There's a base hit to right field. Stock will stop at second as Newport gets the ball in, and there's the Phillies' first hit, and it's first and second. One man out, back to the top of the order in Schwarber. Good hitting here. Not trying to do too much. The Phillies are set up now. And here's their power source, Schwarber. Did not have much success against St. Louis this year. Seven games, four for 29. Fouled out to Molina to open up the game. And if I'm Schwarber here, I'm thinking get a good soft, something slider, something hanging. Something I can get underneath. 0-1. It's never really hit well in this ballpark. Four home runs and 127 regular season at-bats here. One home run every 32 at-bats, which is high. And everywhere else in his career, one home run every 14 at bats. Mm -hmm. You're sure, but you're thinking base hit. The problem is with the secondary that starts getting a second. I don't think he scores, Michael. One and two on Schwarber. Some stretching out there. I don't think anybody's coming in just yet. Although Quintana will not have a very, very long leash. No pitcher will in this short series. If you're Schwarber here, you have the shift against you. He's powering you up with fastballs. Stay inside the baseball. Play a little pepper. And think right at shortstop. Get yourself a, a nice ribby. One, two. Held up, crowd wanted it. Schwarber signed a four-year, $79 million deal. And hit 46 home runs in his first season. Six ahead of the Mets, Pete Alonso. And 16 behind the major league leader, Aaron Judge, who had 62. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Two on for the Phils. Big strikeout for Quintana. Schwarber down on strikes, two left. He attacked him hard early and put him away soft with the breaking ball. Early heaters here. Speeding him up. Uncle Charlie. Here's Reese Hoskins inside, 1-0. Oh. Stotts at second. Veerling is at first. Two men out. We're in the third. Phillies in the cards. On the right side, long run for Goldschmidt, but that'll make the seats out of play.
And Michael, as a player, you come into a stadium like this for the first time, early pro season, you want to see how the grass is running. Then you want to look at that flag. That flag in left center field is blowing in. That means that three runs could win the ball game. So to your point earlier, any swing, any pitch, any play can be the difference. some cloud cover here over the ballpark so the lights are on the sun taking a little bit of a break behind a cloud now right now it's 63 degrees feels like 62 and it feels like postseason three and one So big pitch on the way to Hoskins. And with a guy like Molina back there, he's not necessarily going to give in. So change up still a possibility, even in a hitter's count. Is better safe than sorry. Communicated. Got Molina there like a the quarterback. Here's the play. And I've wondered all year, Alex, how pitch comm is going to work in postseason baseball when it gets really loud. I mean, you see crowds of 30,000. Pitchers are covering their ear just to try to hear. I wonder if it's going to be effective. Well, that's the first sign right there. Better safe than sorry. Go out there and just communicate. Runners go, ground ball is short. Edmund across the diamond, and that'll do it. So Quintana works into and out of trouble. No run to hit. Two men left on base. Two and a half the books. Nothing, nothing. Efficient. He's getting early contact. He's mixing well. Um, those at bats don't look comfortable. So uh, we'll continue to ride him. We'll make an adjustment if needed. We got Yadier Molina leading off in this half inning. What has it meant to you watching him navigate through this final season in St. Louis? Uh, it's been awesome, man. Well, as soon as he got back from a couple months off, just added a lot of energy to this clubhouse. He's a great leader. Uh, and the reality is he set the culture for what we do here. So it's going to happen. Oliver, thanks. Guys, back to you. All right, thank you, guys. And here is Molina. And there's a strike. 40 years old, 19th and final Major League season. You heard what Marmo said. Molina missed 37 games in June and July with right knee inflammation. And he said that this is his final year. Allen is wrapped into center field. Beerling is there and puts it away. I mean, the Cardinals might look completely different next year. No Molina, no pool holes, and there's a possibility that Adam Wainwright also might call it quits after this year. But some people think he could be back. Yeah, and Michael, when you look back at spring training, a lot of the talk around St. Louis down in Florida in spring training was this is a fair world tour for maybe these three guys. And somewhere on the break, something turned, and it's Albert Pujols, and they made some nice acquisitions with Montgomery, Quintana, and here they are with an opportunity to go deep into October. Hits to Tommy Edmund as a strike. He's a shortstop and the number nine batter in the Cardinals order. Tommy Edmund, you see him batting 265, 13 homers, 57 rubies. He got a 6.3 war. That shows what he brings defensively. It shows you what he brings um, with timely hits. He's done a great job. That's the 10th best war of a position player in the National League. If you look at his numbers, and you wouldn't think right away he'd have a high war, which for those new to this, wins above replacement. 6.3 is really good. 
He's a baseball player, that's for sure. And he's a smart player. He's a guy that helps you win. And he's a contact guy. And these guys are great assets in October because they complement the big boys. And the 2-2. Two -two. Foul back. Still 2-2. Two and two. So I had a time, uh, you know, Jose Molina was my, my teammate in 2009 with the Yankees. I had a time to visit with him. Uh, Benji Molina, who does Spanish radio. Uh, Yachty's son. It was like a big barbecue here yesterday. High fly ball, deep right center. Going back, Castellanos, he has room. He's called off, though, by Veerling. And uh, that'll be the second out. So, Michael, the whole family's here, Molina, celebrating. It's been a very emotional week, very exhausting week. They all flew back to Puerto Rico, El Dorado, this morning. And Gladys Molina, the mom, watches every game when Yachty's playing. But she puts the game on mute, so she's not listening to us right now. She listens to the Spanish radio, her son, Benji Molina, which is an incredible story. I think about my mom. And then she manages every pitch of every game, screaming at the television. Passionate three stud sons and a passionate mom. That's a new part is low, so she's not listening to us at all. At all. Well, I hope that that doesn't become a thing. <laughs> Benji Molina, who also caught, won a championship with Mike Socia with the Angels, and now does Spanish Raider here for the Cardinals. So if you're a mom, what a treat. You get to watch your son, and you get to hear your other son calling your son's game. Pretty all, cool. All three sons with all. World Series rings. Yes. And Yachty has two. And now, Yadi has a 14-year-old son that's also a catcher, and they say he may be the best. Wow. I met him yesterday. Big kid. Nice kid. Mm -hmm. Looks good. He looks like... There's Benji right there. Boy, what a great player. And him and Sosha, they, they, they were so good together and called a great game. They had those great bullpens in Anaheim. Two and two on Newt Bar. So I asked Jose, what's Yachty going to do when he retires? He said, absolutely nothing. He's been at it for 20 years. He wants to go home to the ranch and just be with the family. 2-2. Two, 3-2. Two. and two. The wheel looks pretty good, Alex. Yeah, but there's a big pitch right here, Michael, because you have Pujols who hit a rocket in his first at-bat. He's locked in. If you're Wheeler, you want Pujols starting next inning. And the payoff popped up. It's going to be a long run for Baum. And he makes the play. Beautiful play by the Phillies third baseman. And there you go. There's the one, two, three inning. So Pujols will have to lead off the fourth. Great concentration here. Looks it in. Nice. We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Meet our new first years. And goes after that. JT in the box. Quintana deals the strike as we start the fourth inning. Nothing, nothing. Phillies and the Cardinals. Quintana was quite a pickup. He signed a one-year, $2 million deal with the Pirates in November, then was traded to St. Louis at the deadline. And with St. Louis, a 2.01 ERA. And here he is starting game one of the wild card series. And if you're Philly, you have three, four, and five. This may be the last look at Quintana. So you want to start putting some runs on the board, especially on the road. You want to start building a little momentum here. Since September 1st, first in the majors in ERA, first in the majors in whip, a 0 0.75. Anything under one, doing well. High fly ball. Dickerson is there. Boy, is that up there. One away. And Michael, 
not all pitchers are created equal. I mean, only three swings and misses in today's game. So he's pitching a contact easier when you have three gold gloves in the infield, but you don't have to swing and miss at every pitch. You don't have to go out and be a rock thrower. You can go out and pitch, finesse, and that's exactly what he's doing now, what he's done the last few months. There's Bryce Harper, obviously the IL stint. He's playing with a bad elbow, then his uh, thumb. He broke that on June 25th, missed 52 games. Hasn't been the same since then. And now facing this tough left, he takes a strike. Mike, if I'm Bryce Harper, all those numbers you called out, I would throw them in the garbage. If you're him, you haven't been healthy all year. One or two swings is what you're looking for in this series to make a difference. You're going to have your MVP season next year. Right now, just empty the tank with whatever you have left. He didn't like that call at all, having some words with DJ Rayburn. You heard DJ Rayborn say it had a little comeback to it, and it sure did. It, it did hit the strike zone. Cut. Harper sporting a lot of uh, Philly fanatic-inspired spikes and batting gloves, and also his headgear. Swing! And a miss. And really worked him over in that at bat. Two away. Here's a guy that just looks like he's in between. And Rob Thompson told us that earlier today. Look at him. He's on his heels. He's receiving the blow. He is so late, off balance, out of control. Exact opposite of what you see from Albert Pujols. Look at this right here, Michael. He's on his heels. He's receiving the blow. He's just late. And then he's just going uphill. When Bryce Harper's right, that foot is down, and he's working downhill, and he's attacking the baseball. Right now, he's being attacked by all pitchers. He's the prey, and the pitcher's the predator. One and one. Here's Castellanos, first year of a five-year, $100 million free agent deal that he signed with the Phillies. And for him, a down year at the plate. He missed most of September with a left oblique strain. And he didn't go on a rehab assignment, just rejoined the team for the final week of the regular season. And if Harper was healthy, you'd see more of, real, uh, of uh, Castellanos as the DH, Schwarber as the DH, but Harper can't play in the outfield. One, two. Two and two. Phillies had two runners on in the third inning with one out, first and second, but Schwarber struck out. Hoskins grounded to short. Had not had a runner in the other innings. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Foul back. Quintana, 33 years old. He has 89 career wins. That's the most by any Colombian-born pitcher. 11 big league season. And here's the payoff. Now, we have such great crowd mics, Alex. Do most, most pitchers make that sound when they deliver a ball? Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah? yeah. Does it distract the batter? And if you throw a changeup off that sound... Does that make it more effective? Not really. I mean, you're so locked in that that doesn't really pay. I mean, if a guy's throwing 98, 99, you know, Nolan Ryan back in the day, Clemens, there's some guys that have some good grunts. You know, A.J. Burnett from our team. Here's the 3-2 grunt. Grounded oh. to Arenado. And he puts it away for the final out. 
So the Phillies go down in order one, two, three. Well, you know who's coming up in the bottom of the inning, right? Albert Pujols leads off. Yeah, he has all those home runs and more. As electric vehicle performance becomes... The 22 Wild Card Series on ESPN. Presented by Hand Cook Tire. Here he is, Albert Pujols. 703 home runs, fourth in Major League history. In fact, two, three, and four in the Cardinals order will be 1,300 home runs coming up against Zach Wheeler. There's a strike. Pujols finished with 3,384 hits. 2,218 ribbies. Only Hank Aaron has more in Major League history. After the All-Star break, he had 323 with 18 home runs. And he had his 700th September 23rd at Dodger Stadium. Ground ball was short. Stop. One down. Well, when you think home runs in 2022, you're thinking the Yankees' Aaron Judge. Well, since August 14th, Judge, Pujols, and Trout are all tied with 16 since that date, and the Orioles' Anthony Santander with 13. It's amazing. I mean, sometime around July, he found the fountain of youth. No one in the National League has a better OPS. No one at 22, no one at 32, and he is 42 and looking for one more ring to close his Hall of Fame career. Swing and a miss, 0-2. And Wheeler has a work in fastball, 92 mile an hour slider. One and two. Hard to believe that Wheeler and Nola, tomorrow starter for the Phillies, over 2,500 innings, never pitched in a playoff game. Popped up. Hoskins gives a look at a play. You know, we asked Rob Thompson about that. Are you concerned, you know, you gained one and two starters have not been um, in the postseason? And he said, no, not really, because they played postseason-like games down the stretch when people thought that they were going to give away their spot in the wild card. They won big games. They sure did. And Nola was fantastic in the clinching game against Houston. Right in on the thumbs. And Wheeler usually throws 95, 96. Today, he's pumped up. He's 98, 99 with a power slider at 92. And the 1-2. Oh, Trying to come inside too far inside. So Goldschmidt will take first. The pitch before, right in on the thumbs, he fouled it off. This time it hit him. 98 miles an hour, here it comes. A running sinker just gets away from him, right on the form. That, that'll leave a mark. So here's uh, Nolan Arenado. Goldschmidt leads off first. And Goldschmidt heads back to first, and Arenado could not believe it. He thought he got all of it. He threw his hands up in the air. He could not believe the ballpark held that. Michael, we talked about the flag in a day today that helps out the pitchers. The wind's blowing in. The American flag is blowing in from left center field. And Arenado thought 
He had a home run. We thought it was a home run. The fans thought it was a home run. And look at this. There's the reaction. Are you kidding me? Michael, I cannot express how much this hurts your feelings. <laughs> you're thinking 2-0, home run, two ribbies, and you're making a right turn. Here's Donovan. That almost like hit a wall of wind. Because off the bat, he thought it was gone. I mean, you're going to be talking to yourself, and you see that flag, and there it is. It's that wind blowing in. As a player early on, we talked about it earlier. You look at the elements, and you have to play to the elements. And, and if he's sitting right next to you, Michael, he's saying to you, Michael, I hit that ball in batting practice, a home run. I hit it yesterday in batting practice, a home run. That ball, nine out of ten days is a home run, but not today. And now you're walking around talking to yourself. He's still looking out there. Oh. Albert, can you believe that? Didn't you think it was gone? I thought it was gone. Yes, did you? I thought it was. Yeah, Poppy. Yeah, Poppy, for sure. You ever go up to a player and say that? Did you think that was gone? It just looks at you and goes, no. Yeah, I have. <laughs> yeah. Andy Pettit. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty uh, nice Hall of Fame shot. There'll be statues in Cooperstown. And... Each team with just one hit. Bottom of the fourth inning, one on, two outs for the Cardinals. Nothing, nothing. And the one, two. Push right, three. Donovan down looking. So for the Cardinals, no runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left on base. Nail biting time. We go to the fifth inning, nothing, nothing. Be hard to say. Field. It is a base hit. Cutting over is Dickerson. He's going to have to play it out the wall. And Alec Baum starts out the fifth inning with a double. That's the first extra base hit of the game. First pitch hunting. Fastball in. Not a bad pitch. But Baum beats him to it. There's a little cut fastball. Nice and short. Tight swing. And the Phillies are starting with a double here in this inning. So Bohm at second, and here is Segura. You can have a bunt here or hit the ball the other way, but you have to get this runner over to third base, especially on the road, Michael. And now you're in the fifth inning. Runs are at a premium, and we already saw with the win, one or two runs may be a victory for either team. A showed bunt first time. Didn't really commit to it. Let's see if he does it again. And if he bunts, it should be right at third base. Arenado make him field it. Not bunting. Takes a strike. Now, this is a significant day for Gene Segura. He played 1,328 regular season games without ever appearing in the postseason. That was the longest streak of any active player. It's now over. Mm. Ah. And his teammate, JT Real Muto, 1,005 games without ever playing in the postseason. Some players are spoiled. They're there all the time. Some great players wait a long time, like Don Mattingly did, to his final year with the Yankees in 95 to finally make it. And Alex, this is what guys play for. This really means a lot to every player. I mean, to think you play 162 games, another 30 in spring training, and to think that you can go home in 26 hours. I mean, this is a lot of pressure. And now you have maybe a game and a half left. That's why moving this runner over and doing the little things is paramount. He moves the runner over. Gets the job done. Boom scampers to third. So now a runner on third base with one out with Segura's ground out to second.
Want to keep up with the postseason? Just tell Siri, show me MLB postseason scores. Well, Segura gets congratulations, and the Cardinals bring the infield in with Bryson Stott at the plate. Runner at third base, one man out. Pitch outside from Quintana. Both pitchers dealing. Obviously, runs are going to be at a premium. Anyone you could push across is going to loom so large. There's a strike. Yeah, Michael, you got to start managing a little bit here. If you're the Cardinals, you got to have a righty ready for Hoskins and Rio Muto. And they have the hard throwing Jordan Hicks. Get ready. And the count one and two on stop. One one pitch up a little bit got the call and a big call big difference between two and one and one and two and now Quintana can't hear Molina signals one two upstairs two and two Stott celebrated his 25th birthday yesterday. Mike went practice yesterday. He sang happy birthday to him around stretch. Now he's trying to celebrate his 25th birthday with his first RBI in the postseason. Infield in, runner on third. Served the other way. Long run for Dickerson toward the line. And he can't get there. Now, I know it's early and you want to get outs, but if that ball could have been caught in foul territory, do you make the catch and let the run score? No, you let it go. Let it go. Yeah, because if you catch that, it's guaranteed 1-0. With two strikes, you're hoping for a punch out here or a pop-up. Hicks continues to throw. It right to second, checks the runner back, and Donovan tosses to Goldschmidt for the second out. So Stott hit it hard, but right at the second baseman, Donovan. Obviously, with two outs now, they drop the infield back. And Matt Beerling, who singled through the right side of the infield, comes up with two outs and a runner on third. Arenado in at third. You can smoke one right by him. Fly ball left field. Dickerson fighting the sand. And he makes the play for the final out. So the leadoff double by Bohm is wasted. We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Celebrity Jeopardy! New Sunday, 8, 7 Central on ABC and stream. You know, we're talking about what a great baseball town St. Louis is. We should not give short shrift to Philadelphia, which is an awesome sports town. They love their Phillies. And that... That city was delirious when the Phillies won a championship in 2008. So I'm sure they're hanging on every single pitch as well. And Michael, you were there in 2009. It was the toughest environment to play in as a visiting player in the World Series. Smart, they're hungry, they're loud, and they know their baseball. Growing up, I, I came up watching the 76, uh, the Sixers, right? And Dr. J and Moses Malone and Mo Cheeks. And I knew then what a great fan base they were, but going over there and playing, wow. And as the Philly King and over the Cardinals, the Eagles play the Cardinals this weekend in football. You know, talking to Rob Thompson yesterday, I said, how has the fan base been over there? He said, you know, for the last four or five years, we've been 
on pace early September, and then we blew it. So they didn't get too excited. But this year, they're here, and they have, they're at the dance, and they have an opportunity to do some special things. And with these one-two guys, with Wheeler and Nola, a one-two punch, this can be over very quickly for the Cardinals. In these short series, if you have two outstanding starters, boy, do you have a leg up. Obviously, boom, if they both pitch like they're supposed to, the series is over. Three and two. In fact, short series, the best team doesn't always win. Seven game series, the depth shows, the better talent shows, and usually the better team wins in a seven game set. Best of three, different story. I mean, if you're a baseball fan, what a day. Oh. The Guardians win against the Rays in the first game. There are four games today, and there are four games tomorrow. And if the baseball gods smile down on us, there'll be four on Sunday. Winner of game one of a three-game series won the series over 70% of the time. Mm. Soft ground ball. Hoskins flips to Wheeler. One away. Let's take a closer look at how Wheeler's getting people out. Yeah, total package today, setting it up with the fastball, upper quadrant, 98. 98. Woo. Left side, 99. And when you set up the hitters this way, then you set this up. Uncle Charlie. Hard up, soft, soft down, and pitching ahead with a good cadence. Very confident Zach Wheeler on the mound. 18 and a third innings in three starts against the Cardinals that have not scored against Wheeler. Here's Dickerson. Popped up. Will it stay in play? Boom on the run. That's a couple rows back. So we've seen Bohm make that nice running play on the foul ball, and we've seen Arenado showing off his platinum gloves, making two outstanding plays that were really difficult plays, and he made them look easy. So some hot corner magic today. And Michael, for the Cardinals, the key for them to win is they got to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Obviously, two holes in their corner guys lead the way, but in games that they have two home runs or more, 49 and nine this year. Arenado thought he had a two-run homer, but the wind thought otherwise. He's still talking to himself. Nobody on. This is the type of game, if the offense gets you a run, like if the Cardinals score a run here, they'll go to Quintana and the guy and go, okay, there's your run. Because there's just not going to be a lot of runs. That's right. And the 2-2. Good battle with Dickerson. Hey, enjoy the thrill of the postseason with the MLB app. Get daily lineups, live pitch-by-pitch -pitch coverage, and more in our free app with over 150,000 reviews. Download the MLB app today. You've got it on your phone. I've got it on mine. I do. Defense straight away for Dickerson, who struck out in the second. And the count goes full. And you know, Michael, if we were in the Cards dugout right now, and you were my teammate, I would be saying, what are you seeing with Wheeler? Here's what I'm seeing. The fastball has a little bit of an extra hair on it, meaning you've got to get on top of it, and you've got to start earlier. So I would say, Michael, next time we go up there, let's get that foot down early, and let's stay on top of the baseball. Yeah, it's 
so true. The good teams, you see a guy even strike out, and he stops in the on-deck circle to tell his teammate what he just saw. He can't sit there and ruminate about your strikeout. You want to pass the baton and tell him what you just saw. You showed me a team that communicates well. You're showing me a winning team. And the ability to transfer information during the game in the dugout. That's why it's important that guys sit and watch the game. 3-2. Fly ball left field. Schwarber is there to make the play. Two outs. Just did his job. And now they will turn to the hard-throwing right-hander Jordan Hicks, 26 years old. And he'll deal with Hoskins. Yeah, Michael, we go from command and finesse to power. Power fastball and a power slider. He had one of the hardest pitches thrown this year, 103.8 miles per hour. But his teammate, Ryan Helsley, topped him at the end of September with a 104.2 mile per hour pitch. If I'm a hitter on either side, I'm starting to look at that shadow behind home plate. And in another inning or so, there's going to be a lot of trouble. Meaning you won't be able to see the ball as well, and especially anything with spin. So if you need to get the runs, get them now, get them early. Because it's going to get a lot tougher as the game gets later on. Hoskins 0 for 2. They play him to pull in the infield. Outside. 3 and 2. as strong as before but certainly move that that pop-up when there's a pop-up in your vicinity I hate you it. lose it right I hate I know it. you used to hate catching pop-ups yeah. and you would lose it pit of the stomach you feel like you're gonna oh, just heart attack yeah. heartburn you name it I mean it's <laughs> awful it, it is the loneliest place to be in America if you lose in a day like today you have the wind you have the high sky and you have the Sun there's Rio Muto. Here's what I don't understand about you. They hit 696 home runs. One of the most talented players of all time. But a pop-up would make you sweat. Kryptonite, yeah, Why? for sure. Well, I, I think it because I started at the Kingdom and it was so easy to catch fly balls that when I will go outside, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Just a bit outside. Jordan Hicks, 25 years old. Now, Quintana did it a whole different way. He did it with finesse. He did it with strike. He probably didn't throw a pitch over 93. You have to pitch, and that pitch right there, Michael, is all nerves. Trying to do too much, trying to throw it too hard. There's a strike. Well, he made one appearance off the IL Wednesday in the last game of the year. He missed three weeks with right arm fatigue. If you do 103 miles an hour, you're, you're on with the fatigue. Crowd <laughs> looking for a strikeout. One and two count on Rio Muto. We're in the six. Nothing, nothing. Two and two. Sometimes, Michael, if I, if, if I was, you know, a coach in high school or college, I would take the gun and, and put him away. Because these guys sometimes try to throw so hard, they become rock throwers. And all you need to do is pitch. Forget about how hard you're throwing. You're throwing hard enough. 
And you can tell he's trying to overthrow in those two pitches. They weren't even close. You see around baseball so many times a guy throws a pitch, turns around and knows exactly where the velocity is on the scoreboard and checks it out. It's an ego thing. Also, they want to see if, if the ball's coming out of the hand okay. Molina's telling him, calm down, big fella, calm down. Bryce Harper's on deck. 3-2. Punch toward first. Goldschmidt takes it himself. And beats Ramuto to the back. Two pitchers retire the Phillies in order. We go to the bottom of the six. Nothing, nothing. Those season pitchers do a lot of zeros up on the board. Quintana, Wheeler, both of them with a major flex in the first game of this best of three wild card series. Hitting spots, swings and misses. Outstanding stuff so far. And MLB wild card weekend continues today over on ESPN. 4 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Central. You've got the Mariners against the Blue Jays in Toronto. And then 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, the Padres at City Field against the New York Mets. Good baseball. Ground ball, base hit. Edmund reaches to start off the bottom of the sixth inning. Well, Edmund can run, so he is a threat to go. And we told you earlier how good Real Muto is at controlling a running game. One of the best catchers in baseball at it. And a big at bat here. There's a salad before the steak with Pujols and company coming up. 32 for 35, Edmund is stealing bases. Leads off first. Here's Newt Barr. Each team with just two hits. Great situation here. Good bunter on the plate, handles the bat well. Base runner on the bases, pool holes on deck. If you're the Cardinals, you want to get them right here. Oh, he tried to drag bunt and tip the ball into the glove of Rio Muto, 0 and 1. That almost looked like a swinging bunt. Yeah. And a cutter that just chased him. On the grass at third. Hoskins holds Edmund at first. That's a jump out of the way. His 77 pitches was actually the most he had thrown since spending about a month on the I.L. dealing with forearm tendonitis. He shook that off. He, they, they asked him about that yesterday, about how deep he can go. He said he can go as deep as normal. He can go into the triple digits. But it'll be interesting to see how long they stretch him. Keep in mind, there are only two relievers that the Phillies really, really trust right now. That's Jose Alvarado and Zach Eflin. We're still pretty early in this game. The 2-1. Inside, 3-1. Well, you do not want to mess with the nine and one batters in the Cardinals order because then it gets a really difficult stretch for a pitcher. You've got Pujols, Goldschmidt, and Arenado. Yes. 
He's talking with the first base coach Stubby Clapp right now. Absolutely, he should be running three two. There he goes. Ball four. Good time for the pitching coach to get out there, Michael, just calm him down. And here is Caleb Cobham. And a guy with 703 home runs coming up to the plate. Hit the ball right on the screws in the first inning, Alex. Run down by Beerling in center, and then a ground ball to short. Routine in the fourth. But he did look locked in in that first inning. You get about Albert Pujols. <laughs> yeah, be careful here. And if you're Pujols, you're looking early up in the zone. The one thing you cannot do is hit the ball on the ground. So you're thinking middle, middle, left center to right center, drive the baseball. Listen to this crowd. First and second, nobody out. Bottom of the sixth, nothing, nothing. Pull hooks at the plate against Wheeler. Chop foul. This is what Albert's done in the postseason. 74 games, 330 batting average. 18 homers, 52 ribbies. And an OPS over one. Should be two. There's one. Plenty of time with Pujols running, and there's two. Segura so took a look back at Newpar, thought he went in a little too hard at second, but had plenty of time. Because one thing Albert can't do is run. Runner moves to third, two men out. And so we are the biggest pitch of the game, getting ahead, and then the 0-1 sinker inducing the ground ball, which we talked about, Michael, that you wanted to stay away from. Ground ball, the minute that ball's ground, he catches it, automatic double play. And a big pitch, two outs, now one pitch away from getting out of this inning. Here's Goldschmidt, struck out, hit by a pitch. Runner at third. With two strikes, he might bounce a breaking ball, Wheeler. And if you're Edmund, you just want to make sure you're out. And you might steal a cheap run here, which could be the difference in this game. Tommy Edmund leads off third. He gets a strike call on that one, 0-2. Now, if you look around the, uh, the defensive alignment, Castellanos is very shallow and right. There's a lot of room behind him. Everyone else at normal depth. And the 0-2. Make the seats out of play. Well, that double play, ground ball really unplugged the crowd. And that lessens the pressure a little bit on off Wheeler as well. But they were roaring as Pujols were standing in the box. MVP champ for Goldschmidt. Breaking ball in the dirt. Look to score a run here. five months of the season Goldschmidt was on fire September he really really cooled off hit 245 in the couple of games in October as well 
almost half slugging and the OPS 716. One two. as he works into and out of trouble. Well, Bryce Harper's going to lead off the seventh inning, and we'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. A one game to nothing lead with a 2-1 victory this afternoon. Mariners and the Blue Jays at four, followed by the Padres Mets at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN, and the Phillies and the Cardinals at 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central on ESPN2+. Plus. A full day of college football starts at noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, with the 118th Red River Showdown between the Longhorn, Longhorns and Sooners at the Cotton Bowl. And our Week 5 Monday Night Football matchup is between the Raiders and the Chiefs. New pitcher, Giovanni Gallegos. So Hicks got the final two outs of the sixth. And now Gallegos, you see his numbers. And Bryce Harper gets the bat against a right-handed pitcher. One and oh. Gallegos, a three-pitch guy, fastball slider change. This week, he and the Cardinals agreed to a two-year, $11 million extension. That one is hit hard, but right into the ship. Donovan, in short right field, gets Harper for the first down. You know, Harper is showing what kind of a gamer he is playing with that bad elbow. He's going to have to have surgery. We asked Rob Thompson, does it affect him at the play? He said, no. Would it be tough for you if your elbow was barking like that? Well, it's not just the elbow. It's also the thumb. Yep. And, and Harper's the kind of guy that he's not going to tell anybody if he's feeling it. I can guarantee you, being in a situation, playing through injuries, that he is feeling something that's ill effect. And I would not be surprised if he comes back next year and has a monster year. He's just got to give you whatever he has left, and that's not much in the tank. And you got to feel good for him because when, when the Phillies signed him, everything was on his back. Get us back to the postseason. Well, now that's done. They're in the postseason, and he's playing hurt to get them there. And as you said, next year he comes back healthy. I'm sure he'll put up MVP, MVP level numbers. 0 1 on Castellanos. Just a bit high. It's got to be hard to play hurt. I mean, it's hard to play healthy. Especially a guy like Harper. He's so passionate. He plays so hard. He's such an explosive player, right? But he is a gamer, and he's out there, and it makes a difference. 50% of Bryce Harper is better than a lot of players at 100%. And I'll tell you who respects that. The managers, the coaches, and especially those guys around. It just gets tougher and tougher when you say it's hard to see the ball, especially with spin, because you can't recognize the spin. The fastball is a little easier on the same plane, but these shadows makes it tougher and tougher to hit. Swing and a miss. Castellanos down on strikes. Silver card from Capital One with no annual fee and unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase everywhere. That makes you the hero of every purchase. Ah, what's in your wallet? Here's Alec Bohm. One for two, had a double. 
leading off the fifth, but was stranded there. He's made a couple of nice plays at third as well. A lot of growth. He's always been a great hitter, but defensively there were some questions early on, and he made two plays in that early inning. Double playoff pool holes in the last play. Very well done and clutch defensive plays. told you at the beginning of the game the pressure of, uh, of the best of three and now you're in the seventh inning of a nothing nothing game so you ratchet the pressure up even more because you realize what these last couple of innings could mean you're halfway home if you win this game each team with two hits each team have left three on base one and two. And Michael, you see 162 game season. You see all the home runs, exit velocity, all of this. Today, we've played 16 innings of baseball in both games. You have three runs combined. Runs at a premium in October. Today's another example of that. Yep, 2-1. The Guardians won game one against the Rays. So, you see the best pitchers, and you're going to get shut down. 1-2. Fly ball, shallow right. Newport comes on to make the play. Phillies go down in order. Time for the stretch in St. Louis. Nothing, nothing. This is not a drill. Bear Grylls, and you can catch his National Geographic series Running Wild, streaming now on Disney+. Plus. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Nothing, nothing. Arenado will lead off. And he gets a low strike called against him. That was on the uh, lower part of that strike zone that we have superimposed on the screen. Wheeler deals the 0-1. Now in the fourth inning, Arenado thought he had given the Cardinals a lead. He did. He did. He thought it was two-run homer here. He loved it off the bat, and he hated the results. Home run in five of 30 ballparks. Probably this ballpark as well, if not for the win. Mm -hmm. High fly ball. Veerling. You've seen a lot of action out there. He'll put it away for the first out of the seventh. championships for the St. Louis Cardinals but Zach Wheeler has held this addition to two hits and no runs and that looks like it's going to be it Alvarado is ready and Rob Thompson says job well done and it was Zach Wheeler pitched beautifully and held down a power laden Cardinal order here in the first game of this best of three wild card set Alvarado will come up Donovan will be at the plate. It's 0-0. Zero, zero. Where are you going? Stay right here. Your ace. And that's exactly what Wheeler did. Six in the third innings. Two hits. He threw 96 pitches. One walk and four strikeouts. He was outstanding. Really was outstanding. This guy's been outstanding as well. Jose Alvarado. He's a little different than the Alvarado we knew maybe last year. Yeah, throwing a lot more strikes. Maybe the hottest pitcher in the National League. 100, 101 with a 95 mile an hour cutter. And that dominates righties. Since August 26, 13 and two thirds scoreless innings. And he'll face Donovan with one out in the seven. One and out. The Phillies told him, throw it down the middle, let your stuff do the work. Now, the Philly bullpen is, is probably the thing you worry about if you're a Philadelphia Philly fan. Their bullpen ERA 
That's 23rd in the majors. Only playoff team outside the top 14. It's hard to win championships with questionable bullpens. But they like their back end as Donovan. Well, Michael, in a short series, you have a one-two punch in the front end with Wheeler and Nola. And in the back end, you like your last two with Eflin and this young man. So if the Phillies can get limped out of the first two, they did already with Wheeler, they have a chance to have a one-two punch here in St. Louis. Now, how important is reliever ERA? Teams with the top seven reliever ERAs made the playoffs this year. And nine of the top 11. The Cardinals are 11th at 3.61. Mm. And there's a strike to Dylan Carlson. Carlson is 0 for 2. Hoskins in at first on the grass, wide of the bag. Top of the first, Seattle is up 3 0. Cal Raleigh just hit a two run home run. Mm. And that game is on ESPN. Oh, what a game. What a day if you're a baseball fan to sit home and watch these four incredible games. It's going to be a fun October. Two outs, nobody on. 2 1 count on Carlson. Grounded foul. This is kind of a baseball heaven for two baseball nerds like us. This is perfect. Right? What oh. a great day. I love this place. before the game and he's a huge man huge wow like it's Juan Yepes. So Dickerson was 0 for 2. He struck out the fly ball to left. Those are the numbers on Yepes. High drive, left field, going back. Schwarber looking up. See ya! A two-run home run! A pinch hit home run! And this place is going nuts! Two-nothing cards!
There's the cutter, and he was waiting for him. First pitch, looking for that cutter. Beats him to the spot. And then it was just a matter of is it fair or foul. And a huge home run here. Set up by the walk, and then first pitch swing. And a curtain call. A guy comes off the bench sitting for seven innings, and he hits a two-run home run to break a scoreless tie. And a strike to Molina. That's how you turn 42 into 16. Round it to third. Bone backhands across the diamond, and that'll do it. But a two-out walk and a pinch hit. Two-out, two-run home run. And just like that, the Cardinals lead this one 2-0 after seven. C is presented by Hand Cooked Tire. Evolutionized for EV fitment. Electrified. Hand Cooked. And an electrified crowd here at Bush Stadium. A curtain call for Yepes with a pinch hit. Two run home run to put the Cardinals up in front, two nothing. And now watching it on the iPad, first go ahead pinch hit home run in Cardinals postseason history. And Carlson, the unsung hero, that inning because the walks kill you every time, leading to the first pitch home run. Gallegos still in there. <laughs> one and one. is in the bullpen for the Cardinals and he can bring it throws as hard as anyone in the game and this might get be a game that he may go four or five outs you said it earlier Michael the, the winner of game one wins about 70% of these series game one is the most important one line drive left field Let's go to Nicole Briscoe in the studio. Nicole? Dodgers center because of Cal Raleigh hit the biggest home run of his career to get the Mariners into the postseason. And this is to get the Mariners with a 3 nothing lead. Bottom of the first, north of the border. 2-0. Guerrero takes a strike. Robbie Ray told me, because, you know, everyone's playing video games. He's like, when I'm playing it, it'll be the show, and you can create a pitcher. He's like, it's Castillo. Like, right. Here's Stott against Gallegos. Now, they want to have Gallegos get these three outs. They would prefer not to go to the bullpen for five outs from their closure, because all of these games are interconnected. You use Helsley for five outs. He might not be as effective tomorrow. And, and on top of that, agreed, Michael, they also... We're probably going to have one, two, and three in the lineup for Philly. Ball, it's up. Closers work best with a clean inning. One inning, they're rich, they like routine, and this is no different right here. have tightened up their defense. They bring in DeYoung to play short. Newport moves from right to left. Deluzio comes in and plays center. And Carlson moves from center to right. And Edmund moves from shortstop to second. A lot of changes. 
And that's a big walk for Stott. Now let's see if they make a move now. Well, predict which players will stack the most total bases each day during the postseason and compete to win $50,000. Enter MLB Base Chase in the MLB Play app or through MLB.com slash play. Restrictions apply. See official rules for details. That might be his last hitter there. Well, first, Brandon Marsh is announced to pinch it for Veerling. And here comes Marmol, just 36 years old, managing his first postseason game. So Gallegos got four outs and then gave up to walk to Scott. Now he walks toward the dugout, and Helsley will come in. Well, you can see how important these games are, Alex, to bring in Helsley now to get five outs, and that, that home run by Yepes. I mean, if the Cardinals end up going a long way in the postseason, that'll be legendary here in St. Louis. I mean, Wheeler goes seven beautiful innings, all wiped out with a walk and a first pitch home run. And absolutely, this is the single most important game. The winner of this game probably ends up winning the series. So Marmo taking no chances right here. And I guess this is the move to make. You worry about tomorrow or tomorrow. You have to take things and get, get them done today. We asked him earlier, are you managing with your mind on the next round as well? He said, absolutely not. I will not think about that. When we get to the next round, we'll deal with it. So they don't have to worry about tomorrow with Helsley. They just want to get today. And that is the right approach, the only approach. He said, I'm all in on every game, starting right here at game one. And he's showing that right now. All right, Alex, let's take a look at today's Moment to Remember, brought to you by the Wells Fargo Active Cash Credit Card. I wonder what it is. <laughs> And with the walk on the pitch before, he tries to throw a little get-me-over slider cutter there. And he was waiting right there for him, beat him to the spot, and a huge home run to make this crowd go crazy. Now, I'm wondering, Alex, did he more or less beat him to the spot, or was that not a great cutter? Uh, maybe a little bit of both, okay. but as a pinch hitter, uh, you know, Manny Motor, the great pinch hitter for the Dodgers, always taught hitters as a pinch hitter, what made you so great? I was ready to hit on the first pitch, and that's exactly what happened there. Attack, attack, attack. And again, Carlson with the walk sets up that at bat beautifully for the Cardinals. All right, so this guy can throw hard. If you haven't watched Cardinal baseball this year, he's pretty amazing. Now, there was a little bit of a scare one of the last games of the year. He lost his balance on the mound, came down on his right hand. And they thought that could be a problem, but during the off day, he threw no problem whatsoever. So here he is trying to close this out with five outs. And you're right, Alex, not only does he have to get the number nine hitter, but he's going to have to stay in and get at the top of the order as well. And the concern is the, the rest period in between innings, right? And you're going to get Real Muto and Harper going to get a good look at him being the third or fourth or fifth batter he has to face. Now, well, Helsley's 28 years old. Oliver Marmo put it best. He said he comes in and people don't score. Well, that is obviously the plan right here. So here's Marsh pinch hitting for Vreeling. Beerling was one for two while he was in there. So it's 2 nothing St. Louis. Top of the eighth inning here at Bush Stadium. Stotts at first, held there by Goldschmidt. against the Pirates he caught a line drive and used his hands to brace himself while dodging a broken bat and in that moment he jammed his right middle finger but he is obviously okay oh. check 
swing. Did he go? No, he did not. That's got to be so hard. You're gearing up for 100 miles an hour, and then you get an 86-mile-an-hour curveball. I mean, you have to cheat to get to that baseball, and a nice job of holding up there. And Jeff Nelson, the third-base umpire, says, no, he didn't, and he got it right. Jeff is the crew chief of the six-man crew. Playoffs, they have a baseline umps in left field and right. One, two. Tried to go back to a curve and just missed. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes, one out, one on. Two nothing, Cardinals lead. an hour. Not much time to make a decision. 3-2. Yeah, a little slide step there, Michael. I don't like that. I like him focusing 100% on the hitter. You're a power pitcher. Take your time and throw it through Molina. 3-2. Marston looking. He was ready to toss the bat away and take first base, hoping it was ball four. It was not. Good fastball here, 99. Perfect pitch. Great frame. Adam Wainwright's seen a lot of baseball. He likes that. Helsley has had four saves of four or more outs this year. That's the third most in the National League. Edwin Diaz with six of those. David Bednar with five. Here's Schwarber. Power against power. Oh, no! And he goes with the curveball, 1-0. Grab your popcorn on this matchup. <laughs> on the right side for Schwarber. He's throwing breaking balls, one and two. If he's going to get the breaking ball over, it almost borders into unfair. Yeah. And that has Yanni Molina's handprint all over it. Pitching backwards. Maybe go up with a fastball, top of the zone here. Pop-up. Left side. Arnado puts it away for the final out. 2-0. Cardinals League will be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. The uniform and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. MLB Wild Card Weekend continues tomorrow with all four Game 2s. you got the Rays and the Guardians at noon Eastern on ESPN2. Mariners Blue Jays at 4 Eastern on ESPN. Padres Mets at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. And then right back here, Phillies Cardinals at 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central. And that one's on ESPN2. Well, at this point, the crowd here in St. Louis is thrilled. They're up 2-0 as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. And David Robertson will come on. And there's a strike.
Robertson has been struggling of late. And he deals a strike to Edmund. Struggled in September, but the last two weeks he, he seemed like he's getting back to what he's used to doing. He has a World Series ring, 1-1 in 2009. He's 37 years old, 14 big league seasons. Signed with the Cubs and then traded the deadline to Philadelphia. The thing that makes Robertson so tough is he has the longest stride in the game. So he's right on top of you when he delivers the pitch. Three and two. And one of the most flexible guys I've ever played with. He's like a gymnast. Cutting fastball, curveball. Strike three. Edmund down looking. Have you ever wondered what players say on the field? Want to see celebrities try to hit a fastball? Are you interested in baseball culture in Latin America? Check out MLB Originals at MLB.com slash Originals. So one down. If you look ahead to the ninth inning for the Phillies, it'll be Hoskins, Rio Muto, and Harper. If anybody gets on, Castellanos. And a strike to Newt Ball. Phillies have saved their best for last in the ninth inning with second, third, and Harper with an opportunity, maybe with a runner on, to tie this game. Outside. One and one. Newt Ball, one for two, singled in the first, fouled out to third, and the third walked in the sixth. and two. So Robertson has pitched in the postseason. I'm just curious, Alex, how much easier is it when you have a couple under your belt in the postseason? Yeah, he's pitching. He looks great. He's pitching well. But, you know, sometimes not all bad Septembers are equal. Here, here comes Pujols. Are created equal. The one thing that Thompson knows about Robertson, he's October proven. And so far, so good. And here is Pujols. Wrapped into a double play his last time up. He's 0 for 3. The whole second half of the season has been like this. This crowd just showering love on him. You know, his story arc is interesting. He left as a free agent to sign with the Angels. He loved playing here. Won a couple championships here. But the Angels made him an offer that he couldn't refuse. 10-year deal and so he ended up with the Dodgers and signed late here with uh, with St. Louis saying that this was going to be it started slowly in the first half and something clicked at the All-Star game where he's been as good a hitter as anybody in the in the game even at the age of 42. Playing with a lead in these day games is vital. The, the, the shadow, you saw the swing Pujols. I guarantee you he did not see that breaking ball. Oh, no. I mean, Michael, look at this view right here. This is what you're looking at. And you have a double shadow. One is right at the plate. The other one is right where David Robertson is. And with a guy with such a good breaking ball, the way he spins it, almost impossible for Pujols to see a breaking ball. One, two. And just when that pitch was delivered, the sun went in and the shadow went away. You mentioned there are some puffy clouds overhead that sometimes obscure the sun and then you don't have to deal with shadows. Right now we're in that situation. And if you're hitting, you just want to get right back in the box and say, throw it right now. Right back to Robertson. 
So the veteran right-hander comes in and works a 1-2-3 inning. Do the Phillies have a rally in their bones? Stick around and find out. Field line. And it made it 2-0. And the first pitch to Hoskins is a strike. He knew it. He just wondered whether or not it was going to stay fair. And the little bat flip just for the exclamation point. Up. They call him Albertito, which is, means he's, you know, looks up to Albert. Albert's his mentor, and he looked a little bit like Albert Pujols in that swing. Shadows are back. That can't be too fun. Two and one on Hoskins. Most of the crowd here at Bush Stadium standing. Hundred miles an hour, a little late. Two and two. for three this afternoon. 2-2 two -two count, leading off the ninth. He lays off that pitch. Three and two. Good take. Great take. Wow. Off with the third batter up in this inning. Slider. Down goes Hoskins, one away. Laid off the 2-2 two -two slider, but couldn't lay off the 3-2 slider for the punch out. Game two tomorrow night, Aaron Nola against Miles Michaelis. Here's Rio Muto. One and oh. Man of the moment, his two run home run, the difference in this game, two nothing. Cardinals lead top of the ninth inning, first game. Of a best of three wild card set. Not only do you have shadows, but above the grandstand, you've got flags as well. So you've got shadows that are moving in front of your eye line as well. center field that's going to dunk in there for a base hit. So now Harper will come up with a chance to tie. Rio Muto with a one-out single here in the ninth. Phillies, you're looking for one big shot and none better right here than with your best player, your biggest home run threat, even though Schwarber has 46. This is your money guy, and you want one shot. Here it is. Grab your popcorn. Eighteen homers in an injury shortened season for him. And 
fortunate for him the shadows now have gone away for this at bat. 1 0. And Molina really walks his pitchers through each and every big moment. He is so important to this team, what he brings, the experience that he brings. He is the maestro. He's the conductor of the entire pitching staff. They all respect him. They all listen. Michael, not just the pitching staff, but the entire infield, the outfield, and even the coaching staff. Remember, he's four or five years older than Marmo, the manager, and he is the general. He is Tom Brady-like. Only Pudge Rodriguez and Johnny Bench have won more gold gloves as a catcher in Major League history. is 0 for 3 today. Fly ball to center, strikeout, ground ball to second. Rio Muto held at first by Goldschmidt. One man out, ninth inning. One and two. You know, Michael, earlier I said he's in between. For the fans at home, what that means is he's late on the fastball, he's early on the breaking balls. If you're Bryce Harper, pick one and let it eat. Would you guess here then? I would look dead heat right. and get the head out. The one two. 101 miles an hour outside, two and two. Again, 102. Again, this is outside on the count full. So now, Michael, you remember Kirk Gibson, 3 2. Right. Breaking ball, Eckersley. He's shown me that he's thrown two fastballs way off the plate. I'm betting the house is going to throw me a breaking ball, and if he hangs it, I'm going to bang it. Threw him a breaking ball, and it's low and inside, and that put the tying runners on base now, and that'll bring up Castellanos. He was very careful with Harper. And you have to be, and he's such a professional hitter. Even here's here, here it is. Goes fastball away. Breaking ball. 1-1. One, one. Late on that. Show me pitch. Show me pitch. Telling me that 3-2 will be a breaking ball, and it is. Great thinking by Harper, and great job passing the baton to Castellanos. Pitching coach Mike Maddox having a word with Helsley. I mean, what more can you ask for in a postseason game? Ninth inning, time runs on base, hits or even at three apiece, a pinch hit, two run home run. The only runs in the game, it's two nothing Cardinals. And they are trying to hang on, asking their closer to get a five-out save. He's only three outs into that five-out save. And Castellano double ties it. A homer can win it. One and oh. And we talked about this, Michael, the previous inning. It's not easy to go out four and five pitches, especially if you're dealing with some type of injury. If, you, if you're a closer, three innings, three clean outs is the best part for you. Rio Muto, good speed at second. Harper's at first. Philly's trying to rally here in the ninth. Inside, 2-0.
27 pitch, pitches in, and now you wonder, is he available for game two with this kind of workload? And Mike, with knowing Molina here, he's showing you that he can't throw his fastball for a strike, so maybe a get me over breaking ball is the one you're ready for to hammer. Swing and a miss to a slider. When a guy can't get his fastball over, you'll often see the catcher go for the breaking call because it slows down the mechanics, gets you back into sync. Let's see if they go back to the fastball here. Whoa! Wow. He cannot command that fastball. Three and one. Now, Castellanos chases more than any hitter in the major leagues. This is a time to practice patience, a little zen. He's in trouble. Keep him in trouble. You still looking breaking ball here? I'm looking breaking ball up in the zone. Three one. Breaking ball low and away, and the bases are loaded. for drama and here is Alec Bohm he's one for three Rio Muto at third Harper's at second Castellanos is at first the game the lead hanging in the balance And the pitch. Bounced up there and a beautiful block by Molina as it rolls back to Helsley. He has lost the plate and there is double barreled action in the Cardinals bullpen. Flaherty and Palante. Bohm turned an incredible double play defensively a few innings ago. Now he has to avoid not hitting into one. Bohm 1 0. Fouled the fastball back. 1 and 1. Nail-biting time in St. Louis. Both sides of the aisle. The 1-1. One -one. Okay. That'll force in a run. And it's 2-1 Cardinals. That ball hit him. Scoring is Rio Muto. And the bases remain loaded. is going to come out. He's already made a trip, so the pitching coach is going to check him out with the athletic trainer, so maybe something's wrong with his arm, Alex. Yeah, perhaps. Twenty-three pitches this inning. High stress, high leverage pitches as well. Now here comes the manager, Ali Marmol. It looks almost like his fingers are cramping up, Alex. Yeah. I mean, if there's any question, he hasn't come out of the game. 
Alex, it almost seems like even if there's no question about his health, why would you keep him in right now? He, he's lost the plate. The tying runs at third base. Well, and what he's lost is feel, Michael. And when you lose your feel, it is hard to get it back in this type of situation with such anxiety and tension. And that's it for him, and that's that's the wise move. Yeah, absolutely. So Helsley is allowed one run in the ninth. A couple of walks, a hit batter, it's 2-1 St. Louis. Come on back. You see what's happening here. One run in, bases loaded, one out. 2-3-0 for the Cardinals, 1-3-0 for the Phillies. And the Cardinals, when they have a lead of two runs, going into the ninth inning in the postseason, the record's pretty good. 93-0 when they lead by two or more runs after the eighth inning. Well, they are going to allow Valente to get as much as he needs on the mound because he's coming in for an injured player. Now, remember what we told you earlier that Helsley had a scaler Tuesday against the Pirates, caught a line drive, used his hands to brace himself while dodging a broken bat, jammed his right middle finger. Maybe that's what they were looking at as well. So here we go. Harper's at third, Castellanos at second, and Bohm is at first. Infield is playing halfway. A ball hit hard, they go for two. If it's a chopper, they'll come home to Molina for the force. Here's a veteran, Segura, playing his first postseason game. Inside. Edmundo Sosa is pinch running for Bohm. At first base. One and zero on Segura. Bases loaded. Infield halfway. Outfield very shallow. There's a strike. Palante, 24 years old, made his major league debut on April 10th. Also made 10 starts this year. Now working out of the pen. Big spot here. The 1-1. One, one. Inside, 2-1. and one. There's no place to put Segura. is loaded one out and the 2-2 punched out and past the diving Edmund in the right field one run scores two run score and the Phillies have come all the way back and they take a 3-2 lead on the clutch two outs two run single by Segura it is 3-2 Phillies. Just under the glove of Edmund and into right field allowing two runs to score and this crowd is in disbelief. Contact is king in October and a great pitch, even better hitting putting the ball in play ground balls with eyes two ribbies and going first to third and still set up to attack on runs infield about halfway short and second a little closer than that and there's a strike to stop Michael, I know we're in an era right now where strikeouts are so forgiven, but the ability to put the ball in play in October is paramount. 
And no better job right there with a two strike slider. Little pepper. And that was a little bit of a safety squeeze, but it was fouled back. So the runner wasn't going with the pitch, but once oh, contact was made, Sosa darted from third. All of this happening with one out after Hoskins struck out against Helsley to start the inning. at third, Segura's at first. And, Michael, if you're the Phillies here, you want to tack on run here, maybe one or two more. Remember, Eflin only has one career save. It's not like he's Mariano Rivera out there. He's still new at this. So, if you're the Phillies, add on. Two Phillies top of the ninth. Ground ball and a nice stab by Goldschmidt. He's coming home and he's safe. Sliding in is Sosa ahead of the tag. And it is 4 2 Phillies. Philly's doing all the little things. Base hits, walking, hit by pitch, and a great break from Sosa. Great base running, good play all the way around, and just beats to throw. Oh, so close. Sosa made the call. Here's Marsh, first and second. Oh, and one. Marsh pinch hit in the eighth and struck out looking. That was the first batter that Helsley faced. silence here at Bush Stadium. They did not see this coming. One and two. Helsley has been so good all year. But there's still a bottom of the ninth inning to come. One, two, bounce up there. First game of the best of three wild card series. Game two is tomorrow night on ESPN two. Nola for the Phils, Michaelis for the cards. 
Told you 78% of the time, the team that wins game one of a best of three wins the series. Chop, left side, and passed over. They've been resilient all year and won an inning. The fans are stunned here in St. Louis. Well, not much faith in the bottom of the ninth as they are heading for the exits. Here's Schwarber, the ninth batter to come to the plate. What I don't understand, Alex, why don't you have anybody else up? Are you, are you giving up on the game? There's no action in the Cardinals' bullpen. None. You wouldn't think 5-2 is insurmountable. 2 nothing was it? And, and you have 3, 4, and 5 coming up. Yep. So. High fly ball. That'll get a run in. Deluzio makes the catch. Tagging and scoring is stopped. It's a side fly for Schwarber, and it's 6-2 Phillies. Nobody's striking out, Michael. These guys are putting the ball in play. Cardinals three gold glovers had a chance to make a play. None of them did. And you need a little luck, but with contact comes some luck. A lot of bring up Hoskins. He started all this with a strikeout. Tenth batter to come to the plate. Now, if you're keeping score at home, the hard ground ball by Marsh that Goldschmidt made the dive on, they give him a hit. They gave Marsh a hit and an RBI. Generous scoring. You would think it was a fielder's choice. Yeah, you got to do is just yeah. step on the bag. Yep. Waved at that one, 0-2. And, and you have six runs. This is what makes baseball such an incredible game. The hardest hit ball this entire inning, 88 miles an hour. Six runs. That's baseball. Four hits, two walks, a hit batter. One and two. So the fighting Phils come back here in the ninth inning and score six and lead this one 6-2. So you're saying, Alex, ninth inning, not an exit below it? Nope. <laughs> Just a contact <laughs> inning. <laughs> But you saw a little bit of Rob Thompson, a little bit of his style of play. You've seen bunning, hit by pitch. You've seen a safety squeeze, put the run in motion. And there's Rob Thompson. There's a lot of pressure, and that's his style. He's very, very aggressive. He's not going to sit back and wait for the three run homer. He's going to make things happen. 2-2. Two -two. Strike three. That'll do it. Hoskins strikes out twice, but he's cool. They send 10 batters to the plate. They make up a 2-0 deficit. 
They score six runs on four hits, and they lead one. And here you go with the Philadelphia Phillies six and the the Cardinals too. It's uh, it's hard to believe when we gave the stat, Alex. In postseason history for the Cardinals, 93 and 0, leading two or more runs after eight innings. Well, they're going to need to rally to keep that at 94 and 0. You know, baseball is a game of residual, and getting him in the eighth inning to pitch was a great benefit to the Phillies. And defense let him down a little bit. The bullpen let him down. And to your point, when you have a finger and you have this type of stress situation today, it was, it was a big highlight. It really was a little questionable, even at the time, why bring him in for a five-out save? He's done it before. He's done it as, as much as any other pitcher in the game. But this is a long stretch to win 13 games. And I know you have to win today. But it wasn't as if um, Gallegos was pitching poorly. Yeah, you got to trust your roster, right? I mean, you can't have it all done by two or three guys. you got to let the whole roster, got to trust the guys in the bullpen. And if guys are used to three outs, I mean, that's that's where you want to be, especially with a guy that has an injury that he's dealing with. Now, you can look at it and say, okay, he didn't get hit really hard, but the, I thought the key hit out was when the Rio Muto dunked the single to left, then everything fell apart. Let's take a look at some of, a, of what happened in the end. Yeah, it looked like a little breaking ball, innocent, almost broken bat single over the shortstop's head. And then the discipline at bats came. I've never seen a guy been happier to get hit with a one-on-one -on -one fastball, but that was a ribby. And then the contact here. Not trying to do too much, put the ball in play, the excitement. Segura waited 1,300 games to get that he delivered, and then Sosa with a great slide. And you know what, Michael, you look at this team, they're taking on the personality of Rob Thompson. Well, Se Segura, obviously, we mentioned this earlier, the longest active streak of any ball player without being in the postseason. That ended today, and then he got the biggest hit of the day. Well, the two guys that haven't been there, Wheeler and Segura, come up with the biggest days, right? Wheeler was flawless pitching, masterpiece, and then Segura chases the 2-1 the slider and then chokes up and gets the base hit. And again, when you think small in October, big things happen. Exactly what happened for the Phillies on the top of the ninth. Well, it's not going to be easy here as the three, four, and five batters come up against the Phillies. And there's a strike from Eflin. Eflin's a starter by trade. Obviously, his knee issues put him on the shelf a while. Then when he comes back, that one is a drive to left field. Schwarber right there to retire Goldschmidt. And simply put, Alex, they didn't have enough time to build him back to a starter. He also has the right mindset. He's fearless out there. And he might be closing in the postseason. He's trying to do it right here. Well, Rob Thompson said he has a perfect personality for it. Nothing gets to him. He's a big game pitcher. And you know what? If he's the right guy, there's the right inning. That's a good combination here for the Phillies. Here is Arenado. He's 0 for 3. Jumps on the first pitch and fouls it back and out of play. We had so much happen in that ninth inning that a ball got by Arenado. I mean, it was kind of shocking. He makes that play most of the time. He's that great of a third baseman. Exactly, but when you start grinding at bats, you get a flare, you get a walk, you walk, base hit, get hit by pitch. All of a sudden, even go Glovers, they get a little on their, on their heels, a little bit passive, and you get one by them. to right field. Castellanos on the run. That's going to dunk in for a base hit. So Arenado with a one-out single. You know, we talk about Segura's playoff debut and how he got one of the biggest hits of the game. 
It's a thing for the Phillies. Roy Halladay threw a no-hitter in his playoff debut in 2010 against Cincinnati 12 years ago yesterday. Wow. Here's Paul DeYoung. And there's a strike. Yeah. Came in to tighten up the defense. And now, with a 157 batting average up here in the ninth inning against Eflin. Runner on, one out. Owen, two. Philly six, Cardinals two. First game of the best of three wild card series. All three games here in St. Louis at Bush Stadium. Served into center field. Marsh makes the play. And the Cardinals are down to their final out. Well, no fault of Jose Quintana. He pitched beautifully. And then Jordan Hicks came in, Giovanni Gallegos, and when they got to Helsley and it got to the ninth inning, it kind of unraveled. Michael, this is like chess, though. I mean, there's a residual when you pull Quintana a little bit early, right? Mm -hmm. and, and this is the tendency in today's game. Sometimes, I mean, he didn't sweat through 75 pitches. And sometimes you like to see these pitchers go out there a little bit longer, especially when they're rolling. Michael, the question you have to ask yourself is, Quintana goes 75 pitches, he hasn't broken a sweat. Do you ask him to pitch another 5, 10, 12 pitches? Isn't that easier to asking your closer, who's a little bit hurt, to give you five, five outs? And those are the questions you got to go back and forth and think about. One, one. Well, Alex, I mean, we've seen the way the game has evolved. He got taken out after striking out Schwarber, and the red light goes up for every manager. They don't want pitchers to face third time through the order. Yeah, you see it all in October, but in a series, if you get to face the closer three or four times, mm -hmm. the pitcher is better usually because he can face you three times. You end up facing a closer or a middle relief guy three and four times in a long series. To me, that's even worse. And you can also question why take out Gallegos after one out walk. Mm -hmm. That's when he decided to go That's right. to Helsley's. These are all questions that he's going to have to answer. 35-year-old playoff managerial debut. Also Thompson's playoff managerial debut, but he's 59. Ball. I remember growing up watching John Tudor. And John Tudor pitching the way he was, he's not going to get pulled after 75 pitches. But some things are evergreen. If a guy's pitching well, just let him go. Let the river run. There's no need to manage the game five hours before the game starts from the front office. You've got to let the game and trust your eyes. All right, runner will go from first. That's Arenado. 3 2 2 outs, bottom of the ninth inning. Philly's up by four. Ball four. Game's still alive. Carlson yep. works a walk. And on ESPN, the Mariners lead the Blue Jays 3-0. That's in the top of the fifth inning. That game at Rogers Center in Toronto. And if you haven't had enough baseball, then you have the Mets and the Padres from City Field tonight. I'll be watching every pitch. Well, Kyle from the pitching coach comes out. Talk with Eflin. Nolan Gorman is going to pinch hit for Deluzio. It was in this spot 
that Yepes with the pinch hit two run home run. And he was going to be the hero, the toast of St. Louis tonight. But now that's that's forgotten. It's a nice moment, but it's forgotten if they don't come back. There's Yepes. From the exhilaration of that moment to this. Gorman pinch hitting, two outs, two on. 1-0. and oh. There's 27 outs. None harder than the last three. Eflin deals the 1-1. One -one. It's short, Liam through for a base hit. Oh, and Otto rounds third. He will score. It's a pinch hit RBI single for Coleman, and the Cardinals are still alive. Good contact back up the middle. Bringing Yadi Molina the tying run to the plate. Good matchup here for Molina. Molina takes the strike. You want drama? You got it. This final season, surefire, Hall of Famer. And now he has a chance to keep this game alive. And with one swing, tie the game. First and second, two outs. Molina 0 for 3. He has five home runs on the season. The 0-1. 0-2. Cardinals down to their final strike. Some life back in the crowd. And Eflin deals. Oh. Just missed. Paulson at second. Gorman at first. Two men out. Cardinals down by three. Bottom of the ninth. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. And that'll do it. The Phillies beat the Cardinals 6-3 to take a one game to nothing lead in this best of three wild card series. And what a ninth inning. Two nothing. We gave you the stat 93-0 in the history of Cardinal baseball going into the ninth. And the Phillies said no, not not this afternoon. They score a six spot to win it. Spectacular, gritty comeback. Not the fancy way, but the old-fashioned way. They earned it. Base hits, walks, getting hit by pitch, taking the extra base, attempting a sacrifice. And this one, 11 years to the day, the last time they were in the postseason. And they get the victory against a team that they played 11 years to the day.